If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we need to do is draw the electrostatic forces that are exerted on the charge that is marked with an uppercase Q. Now, we can see that this charge is located in close proximity to the charge located down here below. And because they are both positively charged, there will be a repulsive force between them. That means that they're going to be pushing away from each other. So we can draw an electrostatic force that pushes the charge that's labeled uppercase Q away from the charge that's labeled lowercase Q. And we can call that force F for now. Similarly, the uppercase Q charge is going to be repelled away from this charge located up here on the positive y-axis because they're both positively charged. So there's going to be a second repulsive force that's pushing the uppercase Q charge away from the lowercase Q charge. So we'll point it in this direction. Now, we'll notice that the two forces are going to be equal in their magnitude because they are forces between charges of the same magnitude, uppercase Q and lowercase Q in both cases, as well as the same distance between those two charges. So 0.5 meters for the charge down below and another 0.5 meters for the charge located up here. So since the magnitude of the charges is the same and the distance between them is the same, the magnitude of the electrostatic force between each pair of charges will be the same. So in other words, we can label this force F. Now what we need to do is break the force that we've labeled F, both this one and the other one, into their Y and X components. But maybe before we do that, we can draw in the Y and X components. So for the force marked F right here, the X component would extend in the positive X direction, and then the Y component would extend in the positive Y direction. Similarly, the X component of the other force marked F would be pointing in the positive X direction, but then its Y component would actually be pointing in the downward Y direction, the negative Y direction. Now we need to come up with labels for those components, of course. Now the Y component, that, excuse me, the X component that's marked in blue right here is adjacent to this angle right here. And so since it's adjacent, we can use the cosine function to represent it. In other words, the cosine of that angle right there, which we'll just call theta, would equal the adjacent side, which maybe we could just label fx, over the hypotenuse of this triangle, this right triangle right here. The hypotenuse is the force itself, so that will be uppercase F. If we multiplied both sides of this equation by uppercase F, we would see that the x component of f is simply f cos theta. So we'll come in here and we will label this x component as being f cos theta. In a similar manner, we can find the y component, although the y component is located opposite to that angle, and therefore we would have sine. So this would be labeled f times the sine of theta. Now over to the other force and labeling its components. Now notice that the angle that we sort of left unmarked right here would be the same as this angle right here because of the symmetry of the situation. Both triangles are the same size. And so we can actually label their components in a very similar manner. We have the x component pointing to the right along the positive x direction. And that x component is adjacent to the angle, so it too will be f cosine of theta. And then the y component is opposite to that angle, so that's going to be f times the sine of theta. And once we have the components labeled, we can actually remove the resultant force. What we really only want to focus our attention on are the x and y components. So we're going to come in here and just erase the resultant force F and work only with the x and y components. Now, if you look carefully, you will see that the y components are going to cancel out. We have a y component pointing upward, and then we have an equal magnitude y component pointing downward. Since they are equal in magnitude, we're going to be able to cancel them out because they're oppositely directed. So the only thing that's left to contend with is f times the cosine of theta. That's going to give us the overall force. So perhaps we can come up here and say that the net force acting on charge uppercase Q is going to equal f cos of theta plus another f cos of theta. Or if we wish, we can call that 2f cos of theta. Now let's remember that F was the electrostatic force acting between 
the charge marked uppercase Q and the charge marked lowercase Q. So we could use the equation for the electrostatic force between two charges. Remember that equation is K multiplied by the magnitude of one charge and the magnitude of the other charge divided by the distance between them squared. So here we would have K times uppercase Q times lowercase Q divided by the distance between them squared. As for the cosine of theta, we can actually come over here and recognize that this theta is the same theta that we are dealing with in our force diagram. And if we look at that theta, we can see that the cosine of that theta would equal the adjacent side, which is 0.4, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 0.5. Now, of course, this simplifies if we move the decimal place over one place to the right on the numerator and denominator to four-fifths. That means the cosine of theta is equal to four-fifths, so we can actually plug that in right here. Now the only thing left to do is to plug in the values for k, uppercase q, lowercase q, and the distance between them. k is a constant, uppercase q was given to us in the question, as was lowercase q, and then the distance between uppercase q and lowercase q was given as 0.5 meters, so we can go ahead and plug in all the known values. And when you carefully work that out, you should get roughly 0.46. And then since we use standard units for all quantities, we get the standard unit of force, which is Newton. So this will be the correct answer to the question.